Before we dive into this video, I just gotta give a huge shout out to you guys. Thank you guys, we just hit 100,000 subscribers on this channel. I have a lot of plans for the 100 subscriber milestone. Until we get everything set for the 100,000 subscriber giveaway, I don't wanna announce anything too much, but I just wanna make sure I say it in this video. Thank you guys. All right, if you remember the Pook project, you remember we built every single thing on this, every part on this thing besides literally the frame, which is the gas tank, is brand new. And the only thing we really have on this that's standard besides the frame is the ignition. And we're gonna change that here today, boys. We got an inner rotor HPI ignition over here. So we have to throw all this on and wire this all in. But we have everything we need here from good old Treatland for that setup. If you recently watched a build I did on this F12 where we put an inner rotor ignition setup on it, you would know that when you do an inner rotor rather than a mini rotor, you lose the charging system that powers the lights, the horn, the tail light, everything like that. Just like we did on the F12, we're gonna do on the Pook. And what we got here is basically an adapter for a Makita drill battery, which I've used on my bikes. That way I already have a bunch of these batteries. And we're gonna mount this somewhere. Most likely here, or somewhere kind of hidden, maybe under the seat, we'll see what we're feeling. And we're gonna run an 18 volt battery into a 18 volt to 12 volt converter here. Then that's gonna power everything. Well, really the only thing we need to be powered to is the headlight and the taillight. We're gonna dive straight in on stripping this thing apart because we're gonna have a lot of work to do on wiring everything up and setting everything in there new. So, pop off the cover, pull off the ignition, Let's get to work. We finished this bike and probably rode it one time and we're already taking it back apart, but I knew for this motor build, I need an inner rotor to feel its full potential. It was pointless to spend more time tuning it with the stock ignition. So now it is time to set the timing and uh, basically what we're gonna do is find top dead center using a micrometer, throw it in the spark plug hole, rotate it until we hit top dead center, go two millimeters before top dead center. And then from there, it's just the wiring situation. So. Pull this plug out, throw a micrometer in there, and let's get to work. Setting the timing yet again on the Pook, but we threw the micrometer in and we rotate the crank until we see that micrometer at its highest point. We lock that pin in, and then you counter rotate your actual crank, go back two millimeters in on the micrometer, and then rotate your crank again until it hits the micrometer, and now you know you're two millimeters before top dead set. Set the timing plate, and then go back and just double check everything. All right, got the pook all stripped apart right now because we're doing all the wiring. I just took the bulbs out of the headlight and the OEM tail light because I ordered some LED ones since we're going with this battery setup. It's just gonna last a little longer. We also got a flywheel weight now. They don't idle pretty much without this flywheel weight and you can ruin your crank bearing. So we're throwing that 300 gram flywheel weight on and we got some things. So we're gonna mount this right here. That's gonna be running over here to our spark coil. It's grounded and then we have the actual kill switch right here which is a breaking ground. So I cut my original kill switch and we're gonna make that the switch ground right there. And we're not gonna be using this OEM harness at all now. So I'm making my whole own harness and then we're gonna have basically just the power going from headlight to taillight since nothing on the motor needs power anymore. So it's basically running with no wire harness. All you need to do is do a kill switch with the break ground. So it's that simple. And then we're gonna have the battery, we're gonna mount this better, we're gonna figure out a mounting situation on the bar so the battery fits right here. It's a good spot for it. And I'm gonna try to tuck the wiring as much as I can. I know the tail light one, I'm gonna go in here and it's gonna go up to this converter. So I'm gonna try to probably drill a hole here hidden and run that wire to the converter in there. Cut the fender um, since it was so long before and when you wheelie, you'd pretty much scrape it. So we cut that. And we're gonna find a good spot to drill in our tail light. We're gonna drill two holes to mount it, and then we're gonna drill a hole to run the wires through as well. So that's how that's gonna work out. I'm surprised I haven't put this tail light on yet since I finished the bike. I went ahead and just started drilling it, and then we were able to hide this wire under the seat for the wire to come out for the tail light. All right, as you can see, we got the tail light mounted. So those holes I drilled, they're all covered by this. And you can't really see, but you kinda can. But I was able to tuck it in there using the stock wiring mount up there. And then it pops back out right up here where I drilled another hole. Some stuff crimped and basically getting stuff ready for wiring for the battery mount. And then I have the 18 volt to 12 volt connector here with all the connectors crimped on now and a fuse. So that's gonna mount in there. Tail light wiring is gonna go to the 12 volt out. And also from the 12 volt out, we have our headlight wiring. Since this tail light usually used to run all the way down here to the wiring loom, 
I was able to cut it back here and then utilize this sleeve that comes on it to cover up my red wire going to my headlight. So I slid that sleeve down here and then this will be covered up by that under tray that goes underneath here with the OEM like factory panel right there. So should be pretty hidden. I'm gonna have this wire zip tied to this guard because that's the only place I can really do it. I thought about running it inside the frame here, but I don't want it getting pinched where the swing arm moves or anything like that. That will go up to there to the 12 volt out along with this and that'll be my 12 volt out to there and then it'll have a switch somewhere in here. That's what I'm figuring out right now. So I have this switch and I'm thinking of taking some ABS plastic I have and kind of cutting a mount maybe in here or so and kind of under the seat and having the switch recessed into this plastic and being able just to click it, I think under the seat because I don't really have anywhere else I want to mount this switch. So for this battery holder for the Makita battery, I have it facing this way so the wires will run clean somewhere under there. Um, basically it has a three hole mount. The, the way I did it on the F12 was super easy because I just screwed this into the inside of the seat. Well the Pook has nowhere to mount it. So I came up with a little mount situation which I think is going to work. I got this little piece of metal, I drilled two holes to run bolts through there, hardware through there, and then through this little slit that I made, I painted this with steel it too. So, and I painted a hose clamp with steel it just so you can't see it. Steel it is like the best stuff. This is like $40 a can, but it has stainless steel in the paint and it makes metal pieces look like they're like powder coated. I can fish this through there, bolt that to that, and then bada bing. Hose clamp will wrap around the frame, and I think that'll hold everything. Oh boy, That's perfect. All right, I now have everything wired and mounted that I need. So as you can see, here we have our 18 volt in and our ground for that, and that's running right off the converter here with the red and black wire. That'll go in to the converter, it shoots out positive 12, here's the ground. The positive 12 is going to be right to this switch. So I got the switch mounted there, as you can see. It'll be hidden under my seat still. And uh, that will plug into here, and then that switch runs to my tail light. And then I have it in this sleeve, going all the way up to my headlight, and then I have the ground out of the converter through the same sleeve so it's all hidden and tucked away it looks like OEM almost and that's going to go all the way down to where the coil sits on the ground to the motor so we already have ground right here to the frame um, through the tail light and then we have going to the motor and we should be good this was the fun part of finishing up all the wiring. It is fun to actually go in here and clean everything up and tuck everything. As you can see, I pulled off this ignition coil like three or four times to figure out where I wanted to run my grounds and actually run the coil. I went ahead and put a new spark plug boot on as well. The ones that actually use the nipple on the spark plug because I've had better luck using these because the other ones really flatten out the threads on your spark plug. Damn near everything now is set on the poop except for the LED headlight. We have our flywheel weight on there. And we're gonna be putting a cover on here. I don't wanna run this open just in case like a shoelace or something got in there. It would be not a fun day. We have our CDI box mounted as suggested to a rubber piece right here so it's not direct hard mounted to the frame. You don't want vibrations or anything like that getting to this electronic CDI box. So we have that, we have that wire running down. We have all our wires tucked in this under tray which needs to be bent up and placed a little bit better. We have most all grounds on that side, which I will show you in a second. Uh, we have our kill switch, which is ground kill switch. And then on this side, we have our actual switch for our tail light and everything mounted. And as you can see under the seat, we have all the goodies. So we have our Makita battery here. Worked out perfectly. I wish I could have hid the hose clamp better, but I don't think it looks bad at all. So I should be able to tuck this slack in a little better though. But those wires run behind there and up the seat post. And here is all our wiring going to our 18 volt to 12 volt converter that is bolted to the underneath of the seat. So we have some of these wires tucked with sticky zip tie pads and you really can't see them when you're looking at the bike like this. An extra battery in a bag if I needed to, but this thing is literally only powering the headlight and tail light and they're going LED. That thing should last for hours on hours with no problem. So on. shut the lights off. 
Boom, that's all you gotta do. That'll be headlight and tail light connected to that. But I didn't have a tail light on this before, so it looks cool seeing it with the tail light now. And it actually doesn't look bad. I like it on the fender. All right, so we got some LEDs here for the Pook, and hopefully these fit. They looked online like matching ones. It's hard to tell on the bulbs because they're so old. There's like the numbers are like literally wiped off on them, so you can barely see. I looked online and it has this little nipple up here, the same. So uh, this LED looks like it's gonna work. It's gonna fit perfect. Oh, they're staggered. No way, they're still staggered. Oh, the back one's not gonna work. The back one doesn't work, no. Can I make it work? It's so weird. I got it working. The only thing is, whoa, did that just flash on my tripping? All right, we got both lights working. The only thing is, very bright. It looks good. But when I ordered this, it says flashing. And I didn't think it would matter. But when I turn it on, it does a little flash. It's kind of cool, actually. Does it like four times every time. Kind of cool, but yeah, headlight and taillight now work. Battery setup. I think that should be a lot brighter. I don't think a lot of the LEDs are turning on. Well, I realized the headlight was getting dimmer, and that was my fault. I totally ordered a six volt headlight. I don't know how I missed that, but taillight's a twelve volt headlight. I ordered six volt, so we just blew the LEDs on that instantly. But we will uh, Amazon Prime a new one, and it'll be here tomorrow. But everything else is looking good. I like kind of, I kind of like how the tail light flashes. It's kind of sick. All right. Well, as the pook stands right now, it is finished. We got the new bulb in there. Everything is good for the lights. I love that the thing flashes when it comes on. I don't know why, because it says strobe on it. I thought it'd be constant, but it does a little flash when it comes on. Interesting, right? Front light is very, very bright. Good. Now 12 volts in there, so uh, it's the right bulb now. And we got everything mounted in here. It's so clean. Converter up there. And uh, dude, this thing looks sick. This thing looks sick with the inner rotor set up. And uh, I wanted to go ride it right now. It'd be a good time to test the lights, but riding at nighttime is no good on the GoPro. So we will get back to this tomorrow. All right, it is time to try out the Pook. I don't remember how much gas we have in here. This rear disc is what I need on one of my scooters, man. This thing goes... It just locks up, man. Ooh. Oh my. It's got way more. Oh, I forgot I got to cut this. Yeah, I forgot that this thing's hitting on the bottom of the fork. That's a little sketchy when we're setting down the wheelie. Oh my god. Holy shit. Dude, the mid range is insane, but I, uh,. It's a moped. It's a single speed. It doesn't have CVT. You can't adjust how the bike shifts. So the bike's just automatically in gear when you take off. So if you want to get a good mid-range, a good top end, you're going to have to lose the bottom end. It's not like a scooter where you can get tuned out and really play with the CVT setup. This is literally just a straight up single speed gear. So once it starts getting the momentum, is when it starts going. So there's literally... We can tune into the bottom end, so we have that pull away. We're gonna lose all of our top end, all our mid range. It just comes with the fact. Everyone I talk to who builds these up says that the bottom end is just not there when you have it tuned right in the top. You're gonna have to kind of push off and get it going. But it's really not that bad. Once you're rolling, right when it hits right here. But this inner rotor doesn't feel as different as when I put little one on my scooter, that's for damn sure. I wish I had like another one to compare it to, to see how it's supposed to feel, because I've never rode one of these in my life. But when you get going like 10 miles per hour and you pull back, man, this thing just stays. Like right there when you're in it, Oh my 
my god. There it's good. Pook's good now. Dude, the pook is good. Oh man. The back brake is dialed. A little bit. A little bit we got too, man. It gets squirrely on that little tire, man. Pook, man. All right, Pook is ripping. Wheel is really, really good. Now, like I said, this is the only Pook I've ever rode. It feels good. The only thing is, seeing how I've seen other people set up, they have even less bottom end than I have, which means that they probably want even higher gear so they get more top end. If you notice, when I'm fully pinned at top end, we're revving really, really high, and we're probably only hitting about 45, 50 miles per hour. I'm not sure how fast this 64 plenty kit goes on these single speed motors, but I'd imagine it's probably in the 50s. So I think if I wanted to, I can upgear it um, a little bit more on the sprocket because if you've seen before in the other videos, we have changed this sprocket multiple times. We ended up with a 13 tooth and I think we started with like a 16 tooth or something like that. And I have a bunch of other sizes. Um, we're also running really rich so I can lean out the carb there and we're probably gonna see a little bit better on that bottom end because I think it's kind of drowning itself right now with fuel. But honestly, that mid-range on this thing and for wheelies wise, is this thing feels perfect. Like it pulls up and it just wants to stay up. You can just barely hit the gas and it's so light in the front and you sit over the wheel completely that it's literally like riding a unicycle. Like I feel like you can just wheelie forever on this thing. And that's what this thing was meant to be. It's meant to be a stunt bike. I wasn't looking to have this thing geared to try to hit a top speed. It's meant for that middle range setup. And uh, I think that if I just get a little bit bigger sprocket and I can make sure I'm in the 50s, I'll feel better about riding it in traffic rather than being stuck pinned at 45 at like 12K RPM or whatever this thing's revving to. I don't have a tack on this thing, but we're definitely revving high on this thing. But as I mentioned, I can't just keep riding this thing down the neighborhood because they're gonna kill me. And I wanna do a lot of tuning with the F12. So I have plans to take both these bikes to the spot and we're gonna get a lot of tuning done on these next time. But I wanted to uh, test that inner rotor. I could definitely feel the difference, but I don't think that I'm getting full potential yet. Um, I put it at plus two uh, degrees advanced timing. I can go up to plus four, I believe, at max advance. We might hit that route, but I wanna make sure we got everything else set up right before we go like that. So I hope you guys are stoked to see the Maxi back on the channel. And this thing is, now I don't know another thing that we can even do to this thing besides fixing that front bar that's slapping on the fork and possibly a scrape bar on. Let me know if you guys like the pook, if you guys wanna see more of stuff like that or should I just stick to the scooters? You tell me. That's it for this one. I will see you guys in the next one.